Hello, in this lecture we will define first in, first out inventory method, also known as FIFO. According to Fundamental Accounting Principles, while 22nd edition, the definition of first in, first out is method to assign cost to inventory that assumes items are sold in the order acquired, earliest items purchased are the first sold. So we're talking about a method and inventory assumption method, meaning we're not doing specific identification. We're not specifically identifying the cost of the specific inventory sold. We're having a cost flow assumption. That assumption being that the items we purchase first are the first ones that we sell. That assumption does not mean that the physical flow happens that way all the time, although the first in first out assumption is probably closer to what most would imagine we would at least want the inventory flow to be, meaning the first ones we purchased are going to hopefully be the first ones that we sell, but that's not necessarily the case when we're making an assumption. Let's take a look at an example. If we have in our example here, we're going to sell 420 units at $85. That $85 is the sales price, not the cost. When we look at the cost, we got to go to our worksheet and say, okay, how much did we purchase these items for? On our worksheet, we're going to have two layers of inventory. Now, it's all the same inventories, these coffee mugs, but we purchased them for different amounts because we purchased them at different times. We purchased 100 of them at an earlier point in time for $50. Yes, they're expensive coffee mugs, but they're nicer than they look here. So $50 was the earlier purchase for a total of $5,000 of that purchase. Then we purchased another 400 at 55. The price went up to 55 even though it's the same coffee mug. Now we're selling 420 of them. Question is which ones do we sell first under first and first out FIFO? We sell the older ones first. So if we're trying to decide which ones we're going to sell, we're going to sell 100 of them at 50. That's going to wipe out that that category. Then we're going to sell another 320 to bring us up to the 420 that we sold at 55. That's going to give us the 17.6. If we multiply that out, what does that mean is left over? What's an ending inventory? Well, there's no more of these 100 left over at 50. Those are gone. And of the 400 minus the 320, 80 are left at the 55 meaning ending inventory in terms of dollars is now 4,400 backed up by 80 units at $50. The cost of goods sold for this transaction then is the 5,000 plus the 17.6 or the 22.6 if we were to record this transaction, the second half of the transaction, not the sales half, the sales half being a debit to cash or cost of goods sold and a credit to sales, then our inventory side of things, which means that we're reducing the inventory here, to the 4004 and we're recording the related expense the cost of goods sold that's going to be our transaction and of course what's going to be left in the trial balance or the balance sheet after this transaction that same 4400 that is on our inventory worksheet under the FIFO method.